Hello everyone and welcome to this bonus episode of the Dark Table from A to Z series. My name is Hal and today we're going to be discussing the new features in Dark Table 3.8.0. This is the latest version of Dark Table and it has been released on the 24th of December 2021. Dark Table is on a two major releases per year schedule. The last one, 3.6, was released six months ago and uh, for more information about what was involved in that one you can refer to the other videos in this series. Now the 3.8 version has a lot of minor features and improvements uh, whether in functionality or performance. However, I will only go through what the manual refers to as the big ones. I'm gonna go through them from the least exciting to the most exciting feature admittedly in a very subjective manner, but here we go. We'll start with the support for multiple images in print view. Now you can print multiple images on the same page. You can move them around and you can have a snap to a grid for precision. Sounds great. I didn't print with dark table up until now, but maybe now I'll start. Next, the keyboard shortcut system has been entirely reworked and now we're able to control Darktable with other devices like MIDI devices and game controllers. We'll see how that uh, is going to pan out and whether there are going to be a lot of uh, practical applications for it. Next, the perspective correction module has been renamed to Rotate and Perspective and it now allows us to manually define correction settings by drawing lines and rectangles on the image. Next, the color checker profiling tool, which is, uh, has been here since 3.4, uh, is now normalized patch-wise in exposure to discard the effect of uneven lighting and fall off when shooting color checkers handheld and on location. That's word for word from the manual. What that means is that we, you don't have to be as careful when making photos of the color checker on location, the lighting can be a little bit uneven, your hand might shake a bit or what have you. This has been corrected for in the module now. Next, a new demosaic algorithm has been introduced. Namely, LMMSE. And supposedly this is uh, particularly suited to high ISO and or noisy images. Excellent. Next, the composition guides that used to be in the crop modules are now available globally. So you can have the guides all the time while using any of the other modules. And now for the top three. Remember, completely subjective and according to me, but here we go. On third place, we have the Canon RAW CR3 format support. And I don't think all of the cameras are supported completely, but it's a start and lots of people have been waiting for it, so that's great. On number two, there is a new scene referred blurs module, which would allow us to synthesize motion and lens blurs in an image. And on number one, there is the new diffuse or sharpen module. I've been using this for a while now in uh, the beta 3.7 and I'm really impressed. I like this module a lot. It allows us again from the manual to simulate or to revert diffusion processes to reconstruct images from lens blur, hazing, sensor low pass filter or noise. It's amazing and I can't wait to do a video on this one. Well here we go. These were all the big ones from the 3.8 release. I'm going to be making videos on all of the new modules and most of the changes if necessary and if, if I find any use in making a video. If you have any preference on where to start, then leave me a note in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.